In the previous episode you learned how to effectively configure the machine queue for remote tasks. In this demo, we will give you an overview of other aspects of remote tasks configuration. Let's get started. First of all, let's review the operations that can be launched on remote computers. All available remote actions are represented on the ribbon bar. Two main actions include shutdown, which allows turning off remote computers, and wake on LAN, which allows turning them on. You can use these operations to organize an automatic power management in your organization. Also, with remote shutdown, we can reboot computers remotely using the respective action. Another set of actions can be used to hibernate remote computers, send them to the sleep mode, and log off the current user. In the advanced item, we can find an additional set of actions that allow us to lock and unlock the keyboard and mouse on remote computers, lock remote workstations, and send text messages to remote desktops. Great! Now you have become familiar with a set of available remote actions. In order to run them, we should define their execution time, target computers and various execution options. Let's select the shutdown action and see how to configure it. On the first page, we should enter a name for the remote task and an optional comment and description. Another important characteristic of a task is its execution time. Every task can be configured for a one-time or recurrent execution. If we set the date and the time in these fields, our task will be executed only once at a defined time. We can also keep the default date and time untouched, and, in this case, the task will be executed immediately, once we finish configuring it. If we need to create a recurrent task, we can click on the corresponding button to access the recurrence options. For a recurrent task, we should configure its start time and a start date. Optionally, we can specify the recurrence and by settings the number of past occurrences or a concrete date. And, of course, we have to select one of the recurrence patterns and configure it according to our needs. For example, let's schedule our task for execution on every third Tuesday of the month. Good. The task start configuration now displays a defined recurrence condition, and we can proceed to the next step. From the previous episodes, you are already familiar with the current page, which requires machine queue configuration. So let's select the computers to fill the machine queue and go to the next step. On this page, we can configure the task execution options. They are different for different types of actions, so let's review the options for the shutdown task. As you can see, by default, the shutdown operation will be launched with a 30-second timeout. During this timeout, a corresponding dialog message will be displayed to the end user, so that he or she can cancel the shutdown. If required, we can add a custom message to be displayed on the remote side. Enforce closing of the running applications that may block the shutdown operation. Excellent! We have configured all the options and can now proceed to the final step of the remote task configuration. Here, we can set up email notification settings. It's possible to define the custom notification settings for every task, but we will use the default configuration, which can be specified through the Preferences dialog. Let's enable sending notifications of tasks execution. And include the task execution results into the notification message. Finally, we should enter the list of notification recipients into respective fields. Good. But remote shutdown should have an access to the mail server in order to send email notifications. It's not a problem. An access to the mail server can be configured and tested through another page in the Preferences dialog. Great. Now we can apply our configuration changes and save the remote task. As you can see, the configured task appears on the calendar, and it will be executed on the defined date and at the defined time. This is a correct and expected behavior, right? But what if we need to run this task right now? All its options and machine queue are already pre-configured, so we don't need to change them. We just need to launch the task now, in addition to the pre-scheduled time. Of course, it's possible. Let's select the task and use the corresponding action from the context menu to launch it now. Good. The task execution has been started, and we can track the progress by switching to the task management view. 
As you can see, the task is being executed in parallel on multiple computers. If required, we can stop the task execution on a certain computer by pressing the stop button for it. Also, we can stop the execution progress by pressing the stop button for the entire task. But in this case, the task execution will continue on the computers where it has already started. To cancel the execution completely, we can use the abort operation for the selected task. Finally, let's review the task execution results. They are available on the corresponding tab, when the task is selected. Here, we can see the execution status for every computer and troubleshooting information in case of errors. The same information is delivered by email if notifications are enabled. That's all for now. In the next episode, you will learn more about scheduling. Stay tuned.